All right, one of the best things about the 208, the show, and the state is the back and forth we have with our viewers. Text messages, emails, social media posts, they all have the potential to either further a topic or introduce us to another one. Two weeks ago, we got this email from Tony who thought it would be a good 208 story. He said, I moved to Boise from Eastern Washington 33 years ago, and that's when I first noticed the horizontal lines cut into some of the foothills behind the city. There was no internet back in 1991 to research these trenches. Never even asked anyone about it, but I assumed it had something to do with flooding. After years of not knowing, a recent online search proved my hunch was right regarding flooding and an event that happened almost 65 years ago. Tony's right. Back in 1959, the month of August was an eventful one in the city of trees. Actually, because of what happened above it. Back then, the foothills were just used for kind of grazing, not necessarily housing. So it was just kind of covered with invasive cheatgrass, not those invasive Californians. But there were two events that occurred within three weeks of each other that changed the landscape of and the approach to the Boise foothills. Boise, Idaho, about noon, August 3rd. The weather was hot. A man-caused range fire was burning northeast of the city. They called it the Lucky Peak Fire, and crews fought it for about 12 hours before putting it out. Just above Boise. The damage done, though, was nothing like what hit 17 days later. Black bear slopes when thunderstorms unloaded directly over the charred foothills. A 50-year event, they called it, with more than an inch of rain soaking the burn scar. A third of an inch fell in just five minutes. The flood brought destruction to Boise's eastern residential section and business district. Mud and debris 10 inches deep filled yards, basements, and businesses in East Boise, burying Reserve Street, East Jefferson, East State, and Warm Springs Avenue. Never in the community's history had there been a flood such as the big mud bath of 1959. To prevent that from happening again, the newly created Boise Front Watershed Restoration Project would dig trenches that October to catch any heavy rains. Several passes with the tractor are necessary to complete the trench. The plan worked, but their worry was revived when more than 30 years later, another human-caused Foothills fire scarred 250 acres above 8th Street Extension in 1992. Four years later, the bulldozers would be back at work. Here's a little sample of how the trenches will look on 800 to 1,000 acres of Foothills land. It looks as drastic as it is, a man-made scar carved into the hillside but it's an important part of saving Boise from disaster. Crews are already working with hundreds of straw waddles. Helicopters are dropping straw bales for check dams, all to slow a tide of water that could come with just the right storm. It's in this area where the track hoe is actually going to be doing its job, the area further up the foothills, where the fire burned hot and where the soil is loose. The trenches seem radical, but this piece of equipment could help reduce the effects. Many excavators will keep the trenches as narrow as possible. We've reduced that to maybe a, a six foot impact area that that tractor will run on with the actual trench itself, probably only being no more than two and a half to three feet wide. Compare that with the job this old bulldozer did years ago. The trenches above East Boise are 12 to 15 feet wide and remain to this day. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. One man's scar in this case could be a lifeline if it saves Boise from a flood. Richard Pyatt, New Center 7. Well, that 59 flood caused an estimated half million dollars in damages to the eastern part of town. So the question was, did the, tren did the trenches work? Well, for the most part, Yes, in the decades following that cloudburst flood, as they called it, or the big mud bath in 1959, flooding in and around the foothills was minimal. However, a year after that story from the 1990s, on September 11th, 1997, a cloudburst dropped nearly half an inch of rain in just nine minutes on that 1996 burn scar. It flooded homes in the Crane Creek and Holes Gulch area and in Highlands Elementary, causing about $57,000 in damages.